This is part six of Yahweh Ben Yahweh, an ensign for the nations, by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sofi Yudhe Wafe, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. We see that it becomes the responsibility of the prince of Israel to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Now there's a lot of princes talking about the prince. Not a prince. This is the. The prince. This is the one in particular. I am the prince of Israel. And I'm the only one that can make reconciliation for him. He'll make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Praise Yahweh. Let's go to Hosea chapter 2. <clears throat> See, now is the time in verse 10 that I have discovered America's lewdness in the sight of her lovers and no one will be able to deliver America out of my hand. I will also cause all of America's merrymaking and mirth to cease. I will cause all of her feast days and her Fourth of July's and Halloween and, and Christmases and her New Year's and Valentine's Day, Easter times and Halloween time and Labor Day time and different birthday times. I'm going to cause all that mess to cease. And you just, my people just love that mess. I mean, you would think my people created holidays in America. We don't just take time off work for Christmas, we actually participate. And teach our children to believe in a big old fat white boy with a big belly <laughs> called Saint Nicholas. And there's nothing saintly about old Nick. Huh? I mean, it, that means the saints of the devil are all wicked because how could Nick be a party to a lie of sitting in a sled, riding in the sky with reindeers up there. What they pulling <laughs> up in the sky? Such lies. And then you go around and buy it. You, you, you make the excuse for your belief in the devil. Well, I'm going and buy my kids some presents because I don't want them to think uh, that, that, that we poor. Uh, I don't want my children to feel left out. So I don't want them to come asking me about, well, uh, everybody else has toys. Everybody else has the skates and some of these things. And, well, I don't have it. And I don't want the heat from my kids. So I just went on. I know ain't no Santa Claus, but I know it's a lie. But uh, you better be good for goodness sake. Cause uh, if you want some of these toys, Santa Claus is coming to town. You better be good. Yeah, and you're the one out here working yourself sick, trying to pay off last year's toys. <laughs> Helping your children believe in a lie. And then some get real nervy. Well, kids, there's no real Santa Claus, but uh, this is the spirit of Christ and the spirit of giving you lying. <laughs> There's really nothing to this tree, although I know God said I shouldn't dress up trees and things, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a spirit. It makes the house smell good, you know what I mean? The pie. <laughs> I 
you're not strong enough to stand up for the truth and tell your kid, look kid, ain't no Santa Claus, there's no Christmas, it's all a lie, and I'm not spending my money on no skates. <laughs> Don't come telling me about what some other kid got right there. Help them tear their ass up. I'm not buying you nothing for these people to tear. <laughs> See, Yahweh University loves the truth. We don't go through that old lie stuff. We don't go for Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that stuff. We thank Yahweh every day for giving us the truth. Every day is Mother's Day. Every day is Father's Day. We are independent every day. Truth will save us a lot of money. Praise God. You don't look like much. You don't look like many, but I'm going to gather you together. You'll be just like the sand of the sea. I'm going to, I'm in the process of gathering you together. In the meantime, I promise you in verse 12, I will destroy the vines of America, her trees. Even their forests, beasts shall eat up their forests. going on now? Drought. Anybody heard about drought? Anybody aware it's going on in America right now? Yahweh is in charge of the rain. In the fire and I have my way in the storms. You didn't know every hurricane farms off Africa? where we were brought in captivity and come straight across to where we are held in captivity. I'm having my way. See, I'll wake you up with a star. You're going to wake up. Right there and send some hurricanes and tornadoes and floods at you. You'll, you'll wake up. That'll make you know God is in charge. Man, God must be after us. I'm going to quit celebrating Christmas. <laughs> quit buying my kids these junk toys. Boy. I'm telling the truth. So we saw in Ezekiel chapter 45 verse 17 that we do indeed have appointed feasts to keep. And we're not to play a party to lunar time. Pay no attention to new moon. When you learn solar time and go by the solar calendar, you understand that Saturday is not the Sabbath either. What is the Sabbath? The seventh day. The seventh day. And when you study solar time, I'm just not going to go through it right now, but when you go through it, you'll understand that every day of the week gets its turn to be Sabbath. In perfect rotations of seven. To perfection forever okay we look at the fact that appointed feast is used almost exclusively of the three great annual pilgrim festivals that we hold pilgrims we become pilgrims what does that mean you leave from where you are and come to where I choose to place my name I could have chose to place my name in Detroit or Chicago or Philadelphia New York LA or Atlanta I could choose to place it way out on the farm way out in the wilderness and wherever I choose to place my name where will we be? right there right there I chose to come to the craziest people on earth the most backward of all people, Miami. And I can, it's as far as I can go south. Open up the south. 
far as I can go south without leaving America. If I have to leave in a hurry, I can just jump in the water. I'll almost be out of America, few strokes. <laughs> this is a festival. Good time. Then we have what? Unleavened bread. We have seven perfect festivals. You do know that, right? You've learned that? How many do not know? The seven perfect festivals. Well, even for the sake of three or four of you, they are Passover, one. Feast of Unleavened Bread, two. The third is Feast of Weeks. Fourth, the Memorial Blowing of Trumpets. Fifth, Day of Atonement. Sixth, Feast of Tabernacles. Seventh, Perfect Holy Feast is the eighth day of Holy Convocation. Those are the seven perfect feasts. Seven is a perfect number, holy number, divine number. Study that sometime. So when we have a pilgrimage, we make our way. So we are to have professions, pr processions, and dancing, and praises, and Feasting, just eat, eat, eat. It's more than sardines and crackers. I mean, it really is. <laughs> this is a time when you check out of your house and check into Yahweh Resort. Yeah, this is the season and time. I mean, you're supposed to have enough money to do that. Praise Yahweh. Check out of your house and into Yahweh Resort. Relax. Have a good time. Huh? Come and break bread together. How many having a good time at Feast of Tabernacles 88? You really are enjoying yourself. You really are. Praise Yahweh. How many are not having a good time? <laughs> Looks like everybody is having a good time. That's wonderful. The more money you spend, the better time you have. <laughs> it's better than owing Santa Claus. Sounds strange, but that's real. The more you give to Yahweh, the more Yahweh gives to you. So you have to give up thinking in poverty. You have to give up poverty thinking. I talk rich talk. Because the blessing of the Lord Yahweh makes you rich. I, I can't talk any other way. But rich talk. If you're not rich, I have the key to make you rich. How many want to be rich? You rich? Well, bring me my thousand dollars. We are rich, but give me some of that rich money. Sitting on all that money, don't know what to do with it. Can you imagine this? We are rich. They're going there getting sardines. Come on. You rich, I know you'll be sitting at my table tomorrow night, Saturday, Sunday. You'll be at my table, not just in the room. <laughs> Glory! <laughs> Talk about reality, doesn't take long for it to see. Some folk like to talk rich, but I'm talking about really being rich for real. How many really just don't know how to be rich? You really don't know how. Quite a few, quite a few hands. You need me desperately.
See, you that know how won't write me no rubber checks this feast. We'll give God a post-dated check, you know? <laughs> it's wonderful to talk about your riches. It's a better subject than talking about poverty. The most sad person I ever met is a black person that does not want to be rich. I don't want to be rich. I just want enough to get by. As long as I make it, pay my bills, fine, I can do it, I can do it. I don't need everything, you know, I don't need all that stuff, just enough to pay my bills. Well, I need you in my house to pay my bills. The bills of the house of Israel are staggering. <laughs> How many don't want to be rich? Real, just tell the truth. You just don't care nothing about being rich. It doesn't make any difference that God said he's going to make you rich. You don't want what God wants you to have. Anybody know what God wanted to have? How many want everything that God promised? Yahweh promised. Remember, he promised you hell. You don't <laughs> well, you asked for it, you got it. You got it. How many would like to avoid that promise? of hell. <laughs> I'm getting some smart people. You all are really wising up. Well, you know, you're not just going to answer anything now. You <laughs> Let me do a little calculating here before I answer Yahweh. I mean, Yahweh. You, all of you just about relax and have a good time. It's, you have to confess. This is the best time you had in your life. It's really wonderful. Relax and enjoy yourself. Smile and I'll smile with you. That's one thing that doesn't cost you much. It's just smile. It, it's, it's really easy to do. Some of you feel like it'll break up your face, but you know. <laughs> a smile, no matter what anybody say, you won't smile. Just keep your face tight. It must be hurting bad. <laughs> Afraid that a smile will hurt you. But it's a blessing to be rich. The blessing comes from Yahweh to be rich. How many went to college? Went to college? Why did you go? Before? Did you? Did, did, did you go to college to get a worse job? Or did you go to college thinking you'd get a better job? Hmm? Isn't that why you went? There's no need to sit in here pretending you don't want more. That's what you went to school for, to get more. I'm here to give you an abundant life. Rich life. Riches. That's my blessing. I come with that. I didn't say you should worship riches, but you should be happy about riches. I heard all kinds of stories try to brainwash me from not being rich. A rich man has a lot of problems. <laughs> you ever seen a poor man's problems? <laughs> I'd rather, much rather have a mansion to worry about paying the bill than to have me sleeping under the bridge and don't worry about it. 
I'd rather be in a warm house in the winter with the heat on and worry about how I'm going to pay the heat bill than to be out on a grate sleeping out on the park benches. What about you? Hmm? As long as that heat is on, the people I owe have to worry about it. When is he going to pay me on time this month? But when you're rich, you don't have any problem paying. Then some of us have to learn how to live to be rich. Some of us think going into debt makes us rich. And it really makes us poor. Living beyond your means is a pain, isn't it? See, if you live beyond your means all year, you'll find it difficult to come to the feast. Yes. Then it'll make you feel like you should come empty handed. And that's against Yahweh's law to come empty handed. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes, sir. How many of you feel too proud to dance? For Yahweh. <laughs> Some of us think it's fine to dance in a nightclub. Hmm? See, nothing wrong with it. How many ever danced at a school or a little club or a little party? Huh? You did? I mean, you thought it was all right. Didn't you? Always. How many always try to learn the latest dance? <laughs> Out on the floor trying to learn the latest. How many thought it was all right? See, nothing wrong with it. Didn't care how crazy, you didn't even think it looked crazy, did you? But the point I'm coming to now in conclusion is, if we can act a clown and a fool before the world on international television, Hmm? And do a moon dance that never been on the moon. <laughs> then I have a question. What's wrong with dancing for Yahweh? 